you know, in the beginning, I, it was a more of a technical fight than I was expecting. I was expecting Ramirez to come out the gate quickly, as he did in the first round, but then he slowed things down because he he had to. He couldn't afford to run into one of those kill shots that Pedraza was trying to set him up for. You know, Pedraza did, does what Pedraza do. Box, you know, he's crafty, smart inside the ring. He's looking to set up and land the cleaner, more effective punches. But I feel that he got out hustled in this fight. I feel that Ramirez dictated with the volume. And when he got those hands moving, he had a hard time missing. But I thought it was a good performance from both guys. Good entertaining fight. Ebbs and flows going back and forth. But I think that Ramirez has won this fight tonight. For your winner by unanimous decision, Jose Ramirez! But you knew what Jose Pedraza was going to bring. Was it all you expected? Yeah, you know, Jose Pedraza, is, he's a, uh, a smart, experienced fighter. He was going to find a way to survive and, and, get, and put up a fight, you know, and he was, he was there boxing, you know, uh, to, you know towards the, the end of the fight. He was too pushing, so my hat's off to him and his team. You know, he was, he was well prepared, and it just, you know, it was, a great, it was a great fight. I got to see where I'm at right now, and I got to see what I got to improve, and, you know, and, and it was a little tense, you know, coming into this fight because, you know, obviously of my last fight, and fighting at home, you know, last minute, I got a little bit more tense than what I thought I was going to be, but uh, I went out there and just, you know, Boston just uh, had fun in there, and I played it smart, you know, used my jab, and I think I, I think I won more than, more than eight rounds, uh, there was two rounds that I slowed down a little bit, but I think uh, a lot of the punches I was blocking, working on my defense, working on things that I, that I needed to do, but it was a, it was a great fight, and it's always an honor for me to fight here in my hometown, uh, in the Central Valley, it's my, it's my, this is my family, this is the hardworking people, so they motivate me. Round six, seven, and eight, it looked like he got into a rhythm. What adjustments were you and Robert able to work on in that corner to turn it around in the, down the stretch? You know, he, he's, a, he's, he's an experienced fighter. He was going to come, he was going to show uh, and get a, get a second win. You know, he was going to come out and, and show his best. He wasn't going to come out and just kind of, you know, let himself get defeated after the sixth round. After the sixth round, so I just had to push it a little bit more and let, and let him know that I was, I was, I still had another extra gear. So once he, he saw that I had the extra gear, he went back to he went back to respecting me and, and and I took control of the fight again. 140 pounds. After your loss to Josh Taylor, he was the king. The belts look like they're going to be now distributed or available for all comers. Where do you see yourself in terms of getting a title shot? You know, um, against anybody at 140. Um, I'm gonna go back and then work and stay, stay focused, stay active. And that's one thing that affected me a lot throughout this last couple of years is, uh, you know, I trained so many times for a little bit of fight. So my inactivity, my, my discouragement through all training camps, uh, it really took a, a, a big, a big toll in me. But uh, I'm ready to stay active and stay motivated. There's a lot of great fighters coming up to 140. There's a lot of great fighters at 140 right now. So I would love to face all of them. Give me the names because you talk about the guys coming up, but there's a lot of great guys who have already been here and some you've already faced. Yeah, you know, I faced a lot of great 140s, and uh, they're still out there. There's still a lot of fighters out there that, that will bring the best out of me still, you know. So, uh, all of them, man. It doesn't matter who it is. You talked about in our fighter meetings the fear of the unknown. You thought people would turn your back, their back on you after the loss. What did the turnout tonight show you? That was the biggest encouragement to see my fans, to see the people that love me and care about me and never left nowhere. And my family, I'm a man of God. I humble myself because of this community. Every time I leave, the, every time I, I, I think I'm, I'm, all, I'm above my, my lane, I, I see hardworking people daily here in the valley that motivate me to keep staying focused and, stay, and keep staying humble and, and continue working hard. You know, with these people, these hardworking people, I tell them, this is the biggest boxing fans in the world because these people here, they get motivated when they see fighters like us because they fight every single day. There's no boxing fans out there that support like the, like the boxing fans here in the Central Part of California. This fight seemed like a worthy fight for the Mexico-Puerto Rico rivalry. You know, we're, we're Latinos, we're Hispanos, man. We've got to support each other now more than ever. You know, we live in a very divide, a divided world, but uh, my hat's off to Puerto Rico, toda la gente de Puerto Rico. Aquí estamos unos, los mexicanos aquí les brindamos la casa a ustedes. Y pues arriba los hispanos, no? I got nothing against that. You know, Puerto Rico has great champions, pero Mexico también tiene puro chingón también. All right, so tonight... 
The night belonged to Mexico. The night belonged to Jose Ramirez and Jose Pedraza gave all he could inside this ring.